Hey everybody, Austin back again with another Let's Play video. Today, continuing our sort of little mini Super FX marathon, I'm going to go ahead and just call it that since this is the third Super FX game I've covered uh, in the last week or so. And this is Star Fox for the Super Nintendo. This was the first Super FX game released. I'm not sure if it was the first that Nintendo and Argonaut actually worked on, but uh, it was the first one that came out. And you know, for me, growing up in the late 80s and early 90s, um, and only being about 11 years old when this game came out, uh, Star Fox was really amazing when it came out, especially considering it was running on the Super Nintendo, and, you know, it wasn't like some kind of next-gen console that our parents had to buy into. Um, now, there had been plenty of 3D polygonal games, especially arcade games prior to this, but I think for many people, uh, especially myself, this was my first uh, experience with 3D polygons. Uh, you know, uh, there might have been a couple games before him that had some three-dimensional aspects. Maybe they were wireframe or just kind of crappy in general. But Star Fox really blew my mind back in the day. And you know what? 20-something years later, it is still a pretty good game. Um, I picked up this cartridge just, you know, about a week ago, and I've been having a ton of fun with it uh, these last, well, this last week or so. I've had it. And uh, the game still holds up really well from a gameplay perspective. Graphically, obviously, it's dated. Uh, it's also got some frame rate issues, but the game controls are responsive. The music is still awesome, and the overall presentation is, you know, really few Super Nintendo games, I think, were able to match the presentation of this game. It just holds up very well in that regard. So, uh, yeah, basically what's going to happen in this Let's Play, guys, is... I'm going to run through the the first path throughout the game, or the first course, whatever you want to call it. And um, what I'm going to try to do is actually do two Let's Plays. I'm going to essentially do uh, level one, as they call it, or the first course, which is the center pathway. If you notice, you can actually switch the paths left and right. Um, this uh, right path is the hardest, level three. Uh, the left path is sort of the medium difficulty, and the, oh, I'm sorry, the left path is sort of like the medium difficulty, which is, it's actually called level two. And the center path, which most people play, level one, is sort of your, I, I would call it your easy mode, or maybe you can call it your normal mode, and then it gets hard, and then very hard. And the right course I've actually never completed, so I might not do a Let's Play of Course 3, but I do plan on doing a Let's Play of Course 2, so you might actually see that in a few days after this video. So we're going to go ahead and start off on the uh, the center course, and just kind of go from there. But man, like I was saying, Star Fox was uh, a really impressive game for me when it came out. Um, maybe not for other people, depending on you know which region of the world you were in. Um, you know, or if you were like a heavy PC gamer or something like that, you had already experienced more impressive games on your systems. But for uh, just a console gamer such as myself, and with the Super Nintendo being the most technically powerful hardware I owned at the time, uh, Star Fox was really just kind of jaw-dropping for me. And again, like I said, it's, it's, it was a great game back then, especially back then, but I think it's still a really good game now. And easily, I think, the best Super FX game available. Funny enough, it was the first, and it's still the best. <laughs> Which is a shame. I think uh, the Super FX had a lot of potential in the Super Nintendo, but it was kind of squandered with uh, sort of mediocre games like, um, you know, Vortex. And uh, there was uh, a four-wheeler game over in Europe that just kind of... You know, Dirt Tracks FX actually isn't that bad, but uh, it could have been a lot better. Um, although its problems weren't necessarily the Super FX. It, its problems were just general uh, <laughs> graphical and sound issues. Uh, or sound mediocrity, I guess you could say. Uh, lots it, Stunt Tracks FX, not Stunt Tracks, but uh, Dirt Tracks FX kind of just lacked um, that, that nice polish that like Star Fox has, you know. Dirt Tracks doesn't really have a nice graphical user interface or anything like that. Um, but it actually plays really well, though, as you guys saw on my Dirt Tracks Let's Play. So I mean, it's not a knock to the game, but it, it definitely, uh, its potential as an overall game uh, was kind of squandered a bit, I think. But the overall, the overall gameplay in that is pretty solid. 
So, Star Fox, here we go. We're probably about a quarter of the way through the first level. Uh, as I was mentioning, uh, you know, Star Fox still plays really well. It's not really that laggy in terms of the controls. Um, unlike Stunt, uh, <laughs> Stunt Race FX, which was the last Super FX Let's Play I did. And man, that game does not hold up well at all today. I think graphically it's decent, and it's probably, it might even be a step up uh, in terms of visuals from Star Fox, but the controls are so laggy in that game, it, I just, I cannot recommend it in this day and age. And I had a hell of a time trying to play it on that Let's Play, and uh, I don't really intend on going back to it uh, anytime soon, if ever, just because it's so laggy. Uh, Sun Race is probably one of those games where you'd want to try to overclock the Super FX. Uh, there's a way to apparently overclock the Super FX ships and the cartridges uh, through obviously, you know, physical means by opening up the cartridge and whatnot. There, I believe there are tutorials out there, and um, there are people that have done it. And Stunt Race FX might be a solid game when you overclock the Super FX. Or if you play it through emulation, <laughs> you could probably get it running at a zillion frames per second in emulation. And then at that point, it would be recommendable, assuming the controls aren't laggy as they were when I did that Let's Play. But Star Fox is fine as it is. I mean, it's got some parts in the game that get really slow. And like right now, the frame rate, the frame rate's kind of inconsistent. It goes from being super smooth when there are pretty much no other polygons on screen to being a little choppy. Like right now, it's probably moving at probably eight to nine frames per second, maybe 10 or 12. Um, it's not really moving that smoothly when you think about it compared to a modern day games. Uh, now modern day games, Every game runs at at least 30 frames per second, typically. That's, you know, kind of like the benchmark. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, and obviously the the best running games obviously will run at like 60 frames per second or something like that. But, you know, for your, your big budget AAA games on, say, the Xbox 360, 30 frames per second has usually been the norm in order to get the most out of, you know, extra graphical effects and stuff like that. You know, like the whole Halo series ran at 30 frames per second, for instance. But uh, Star Fox doesn't even run remotely close to that. Unless, again, there's like nothing on screen. If it's just my ship and there's nothing else and it's just like the ground, and it'll, it'll run pretty smooth. It'll get up to, you know, probably over in, you know, high 20s. The high 20s, I'd say, at least. Um, but for the most part, Star Fox is pretty choppy, but... You know, and usually choppiness really bothers me, but Star Fox doesn't... Well, let me go back a step. Normally, choppiness really bothers me because choppiness in a lot of games usually also equates to laggy controls, unresponsive controls and whatnot. But that's not the case in Star Fox. It's a very responsive game, and it just it still feels great today. So, here we are at level 2. And Star Fox will kind of force you to go into some first-person modes at the beginning of certain stages, usually these space levels. And I actually prefer to play these in the first-person view, and there's a couple of reasons for that. For one, uh, it actually mixes up the experience because, yeah, I could play it like this through the whole game, but the first-person perspective actually sort of kind of mixes things up for me. Uh, the game actually sometimes can run a little bit smoother in first person because it's not rendering your ship So you'll notice the frame rate actually improves and uh, Two it's just it's fun You can actually see a cursor on the screen and it makes aiming feel a little bit different than it normally does when you're playing uh, in the third person perspective, so I really like to stick in uh, stick to these first person modes uh, when they are available immediately now you can always no, you cannot always go into first-person mode. Uh, usually, you can only go into first-person mode in these space stages, as far as I'm aware. Um, but, you know, you can play these in third-person if you'd like as well. But I like to do it as is, just, you know, to mix things up, so. Now, I've sort of been talking so far with just the assumption that you people watching have already played Star Fox before, and you already know what this is all about. Um, if you are one of the few watching that uh, have not played Star Fox before, I'll go ahead and try to explain it uh, in a nutshell in just a minute or two. Uh, essentially, your ship has a shield, which is denoted at the uh, bottom left-hand corner of the screen. 
Uh, so enemies will deal damage, but your shield will just, uh, you know, deplete a little bit for every hit that you take. Running into solid objects does way more damage than actually getting hit by uh, laser shots. Now, there are more powerful shots in the game, from what I can tell. When enemies throw these, like, glowing balls at you, those usually do more damage than the the sort of orange laser shots. Sort of, sort of like the equivalent to my normal uh, blue shot. Uh, if you look in the bottom hand, right hand corner of the screen, actually, uh, you've got a bunch of, uh, you've got a meter, it's a blue meter, and that's actually your your speed up and slow down meter. Uh, I don't really know what the actual term is for it, but I'll just call it that. If you hold B, the meter actually goes down and you slow down for just a brief moment. Um, there's no manual uh, acceleration in this game or anything like that. Uh, you always run at a very specific speed, and but if you hold B again, like I just did right now, uh, your ship will slow down for just about two seconds or so, and then it'll go back up to its normal speed. Now, if you press uh, X, you'll actually do a boost, the meter will deplete, and you'll you'll have a quick boost for a second, which is pretty cool. So now, the levels are actually designed around that. There are some levels where you're gonna have like these opening, opening and closing corridors that can pretty much crush you, and by, you know, slowing down intentionally or speeding up, you can actually uh, get through those sort of obstacles uh, intelligently. And, you know, again, some levels are sort of designed around that. Now, if you press um, A, you can actually drop these bombs out. And the, the amount of bombs you had are, have are also denoted above that right boost or speed meter. And uh, so those are really useful as well. For instance, on this boss, you can actually toss one out and destroy all of the, uh, the glowing pieces, which is required to break him down to his final form here, which then you just hit the center of him and uh, he blows up just like that. Uh, all the bosses in this game have a life meter except for the final boss. And so I like that because you can actually see how much damage you're doing and it feels really satisfying for some reason. I like how in this game, uh, you actually can kill bosses fairly quickly in this game, and it just feels satisfying. You know, the way you make contact and you connect your bullets with them, and you see that life meter dropping really fast at the same time. It's just sort of uh, emphasizing the fact that you're doing a lot of damage. It's reinforcing that fact, and uh, you just want to keep <laughs> damaging the bosses and uh, doing as much as you can. And uh, it's really fun. Star Fox is just a really fun game. It does a lot of things right. And the only things it doesn't do right aren't necessarily inherent to just bad design choices. It's just the hardware and the sort of type of game it is. A 3D polygonal game on a Super Nintendo. It's not going to be 60 frames per second. It's not going to hold up amazing today. Few three-dimensional games from the 90s hold up well at all today. I mean, few three-dimensional games, even from the early 2000s, 10 years after this, don't hold up well today. That's just the nature of polygons. Fortunately, this is one of those games that just uses flat-shaded polygons, and that's it. And so the polygons actually... They're, they're, they are what they are, so you're going to either love them or hate them. And I'm actually a fan of the old, just flat-colored uh, polygons, no textures or anything like that. Star Fox uh, only has a handful of textures throughout the entire game. Uh, for instance, on the final boss, when you break his, uh, his uh, first form down, his second form is actually a textured cube, which is kind of interesting. It's one of the only textured objects in the entire game. Every other object is just flat, or it, it sort of has this like mesh kind of shading, like that big battleship in the background has. That's more of like a mesh kind of effect. You can sort of see the lines going through it, and as you get up closer, not really up closer, but uh, you can sort of see like a, a, a grayish gridded pattern uh, that's a slightly different tone than what the, uh, the object is once you get up close to it, so. But uh, this is the level where you start going into some of these ships, which is pretty cool. And again, it's just another way for the game to mix things up. And again, we're only on the center path, or level one, as they call it. Not literally level one, technically this is like level three uh, by this point in the game. But the center pathway we are taking is technically called level one. And it's the easiest path. 
So now you have similar uh, obstacle section sections in the other paths you can take in the game, but they become increasingly more difficult. <laughs> much, much more difficult, actually. Um, and I am definitely going to do a follow-up Let's Play on this and do the second path, and I should be able to beat that. I shouldn't have too many problems. It, there are some really tricky sections, but... Um, I will definitely be doing a follow-up video with that, so definitely stay tuned. And you can definitely see there that the game starts to get more difficult. And if you're the type of person like I was that grew up with Star Fox, but you only played the center path, which is actually what I did back in the day. I would always just play the center path. Like, I don't know why I never really experimented with the other courses, but I really just kept playing through the, uh, the center path. And, um... As, a, as a, an older adult now, playing through the game and playing the alternate paths, I'm seeing there's a lot more game available that I really just missed out on as a kid. And again, it gets much more challenging, so it's in a way, it's, it's a little more exciting. So, if you haven't done that, uh, definitely stay tuned for my next video so you can see what the side path is. There's some extra environments and stuff you get to that you don't really experience in the center path as well, so... You know, it's definitely recommended that you, you check that out. So stay tuned for that in a couple of days after this video. So I think I can go back in the first person. Yes, I can. So here we are, back in the first person. Now, I am pretty sure that in um, the normal ground levels that there's no way to go back in the first person mode. You have to play in the third person. Although there are two camera angles in the third person mode. There's one where your ship is kind of closer to the screen and one where it's obviously the stock where it's it's farther away. So, but I'll go ahead and test that theory. I am I'm pretty sure I am right, but I'll go ahead and test it anyway uh, once we beat this level. I don't think we do another space stage after this. I'm pretty sure we go back to a ground level again. So this is it. This is the last section. There's going to be a, a large core in the center of this, and this is basically going to... It's going to denote the boss. It's essentially... You're flying in this... You'll, you'll see it. I mean, I don't even know why I'm trying to explain it. <laughs> and so, yeah, just another sort of... Uh, obstacle section. These are, these are kind of cool. You know, it's a decent little segue. Mixes things up. I always like that. You do have to be a little careful, though. This is where... Ow. I somehow slammed into it. You have to be really, really careful about not slamming into stuff in this game. And don't hug the wall for too long, because your ship... Uh, if you take too much damage... Ow, like I just smacked the wall right there. If you take too much damage, your ship's wings will actually snap in half. Uh, and it'll actually affect your your movement. Movement becomes more difficult, especially if both wings are snapped off. Um, and you lose your firepower. You go back to firepower level one. So you really have to uh, make sure you don't slam into stuff in this game. Slamming into things is bad. Very, very bad in this game. Running into bullets isn't quite as bad. Uh, it takes a lot of bullets to start doing damage to your wings. Even if that is, if they do damage to your wings. I'm, I'm not sure if you're just getting shot with bullets will uh, break your wings off. But slamming into objects definitely will, so watch out for that. So that is stage three. I, I think we have two or three more stages left. And then that should do it for this episode. Now, you do get a score based on... I'm not really sure what it's based on, to be honest. It might be the health you have. It might be the amount of enemies you shoot down. Um, I honestly have no idea what, what calculates your score. But your score is tallied up at the end of each stage. And if you get a perfect rating, uh, you'll get an extra life. Not an extra life. You'll get an extra continue. Um, because you do have a limited amount of lives in this game. And when you get a game over, you go to the continue screen. Uh, which you have a finite amount of as well. And technically, when you start the game, I don't think you have any continues. I think it's just zero. And you earn the continues through playing well and getting a perfect score on each stage. 
All right, so we're on our our ground level, back to a ground level. Let's go ahead and uh, hit select and see if we can go to first person mode. And nope, doesn't look like we can, so I was right. Uh, no first person mode on the ground stages. But, you know, on the ground stages, it just it feels more natural to, for me to play in third person mode. Maybe it's just because that's how the first level plays and you know, that's definitely that was my first experience with Star Fox, but uh, playing in third person just always felt very natural um, on these types of stages, so. So again, this still isn't that difficult, and this first path doesn't really pick up in difficulty, in my opinion, until the very final stage. Um, literally, just like the final ground stage in the game. Cool, got it. Those little spinning things you saw me shooting at, um, you have to hit the three lit portions of them. And every time you do that, it spins around, and when you hit all three portions, uh, a special item will appear in the center of it, and you can fly through it to collect it. And generally, from what I can tell, it's extra lives. So, I've actually collected two extra lives on those so far. And, yeah. And just a heads up, uh, for those of you guys that have not played this game before, the sort of, you know, there's a lot of uh, ring patterns in this game. Like, this one right here is actually a checkpoint. So you always want to fly through those if you can. Otherwise, if you die, you're going to have to do the whole level over again, which can suck so but there's also other ones that are say orange and they sort of f you know fling around they fly around towards the center of the screen usually and if you fly through those it'll actually give you some of your health back so this power right here is a bomb and I'm maxed out on bombs you can only collect five so if I see one I generally try to use a bomb to make room for it uh, just like in say other shoot 'em ups that have you know, caps on the amount of bombs you can have. It looks like we're at the boss already. This guy, if I recall correctly, you have to shoot all of his legs, and they eventually sort of like snap off and break off, and then you've got to shoot the core. This could be a tricky boss, but fortunately I have my third power up, my weapon power up, and it's the final weapon power up. It's pretty much the blue balls, or whatever they call it. There's actually a specific name for it. Uh, whenever you pick up a power-up in this game, they do tell you what the power-up is called. But uh, this is the third power-up, and it is the most powerful. And so killing these bosses, definitely, it, it goes a lot faster when you have this weapon. And something I should note is that when you toss bombs out, you can actually tap A again to uh, detonate it faster, like that. I just detonated it on, uh, intentionally. Or you can just let it fly out and let it detonate on its own, and it'll be closer to the enemies and whatnot. And I think that actually does make a difference. Ah, got it. I was trying to uh, destroy that last leg. Um before it got to me. I was playing it risky. I should have just tried to dodge it because I might not have destroyed it and it would have hit me and it would have done a lot of damage. But uh, my strategy paid off. It worked out. It worked out. So, All right, so I think we're going to be at another space stage and we're basically at the final set of levels. We're at Planet Venom now. Another 100% and that should be another continue, I believe. Or, or not. It didn't say I got anything, so... So we're at Venom, which is the final place. And Venom always starts off with the space stage. And then you go to a ground stage. And then at the end of that ground stage, you go to another core section. And you fight the final boss. And then that's the end of the game. So... Go and skip through that. And again, like I said, space stage... Starting on path two, these final space stages become pretty, pretty challenging. Um, and you guys will probably see what I mean once I do that Let's Play, and I'll, I'll try to explain it to you as I'm playing it then. But this one still isn't really that bad, just, you know, stay focused. Having the cursor really helps with your aim, because there's a lot more enemies now. 
Which again is another reason why I like to stay in the first person mode. <clears throat> now, as you guys have probably noticed, uh, I've got comrades that have been flying around with me throughout this whole game. And uh, they actually have their own life meters. And essentially what happens is if their meters drain, I believe they are out of commission for the rest of the game. I don't think they come back. I don't know if they really help you that much, though, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm so good at just mowing everything down myself. I don't know if they really really do anything you know worthwhile so but uh, I think them being out affects your uh, end of level score so if you're trying to play for score or perfection or something like that uh, you've got to make sure you don't shoot them down you can actually do damage to them yourself by shooting them um, they also go through portions where they have enemies chasing them and um, they have enemies chasing them, and you can try to shoot the enemies down. The enemies will do damage to them if you don't shoot them down. So, there's something you kind of have to think about. Or not, you can just let your uh, comrades die. I always try to save them because I just like shooting everything I can in this game. It feels really good, so... Uh, and that's one of the things I've always liked about Star Fox, is the action just feels really good in this game. Uh, all, all of... The way your bullets uh, connect with enemies just feels very satisfying. Uh, along with the sound effects the enemies make uh, as you do that, so. And that's it. Uh, that is the boss for this section. Now we're going to be on the second part of Venom, which is a ground level. And then from there, we go to the final boss, which should be a cakewalk. Again, this middle path isn't very difficult at all. Um, I mean, it might be difficult if you've never played the game before, but as someone like me who grew up with the game, Got an extra credit that time, finally. Um, as someone like me who grew up with the game, uh, the center path is just very easy. It's still fun, don't get me wrong. But it's, you know, it, I have really no excuse uh, to not beat it <laughs> without dying or something like that. So... I like these stages on Venom. They get very creative and abstract. Uh, you know, random blocks just appearing out of nowhere. Lots of weird spinning... Um, forms and stuff like that. It's it's pretty cool. I like um, you know, stuff like that that's just kind of like out there. That's unconventional, you know, uh, abstract level designs. I've always enjoyed that. And uh, the polygon look definitely helps with that. <laughs> so these big walls, you can actually shoot them and the arrow changes and they'll sort of fly down in that direction. Ooh. Oh. God, that was bad. That was dumb. That was close. I'm glad I didn't uh, snap a wing off in the process because this is definitely a part of the game where you don't want to lose your firepower because, uh, again, it's the most powerful shot in the game. Granted, there's only three different shot types. There's just your standard shot, then there's a twin version of that, and then there's the twin um, photon or whatever they call it. I still don't know what they call it. <laughs> I've got headphones on, and again, when you pick up a power-up, they tell you what the uh, the weapon is. But uh, I'm pretty much... It, it's hard listening to the game uh, with my new video setup. I'm using the Elgato Game Capture HD. And there's about a three-second delay uh, of audio. So I'm not really paying attention to the audio when I'm playing. I just have headphones on like it's uh, just background noise to help me when I'm talking and whatnot, so, but I'm not really, I, I don't have it up loud enough to hear what they actually say and whatnot, so. So here's another section where blocks just start falling on you. Oh, why did I, god, why did I do that? I'm not paying attention. Not paying attention at all. So, this boss is back, and he's actually got two forms now. Um, 
fighting him on that last stage, uh, basically the gimmick is he splits off into three parts, only one of them does damage. So you want to find the one where he actually takes hits and just focus on that one. Uh, he does the same thing again, however, he's got a much larger form now that's a little bit trickier, so... Uh, you know, if you're not careful here, you will die, so... You know, definitely be careful with this guy. Now, a lot of these bosses in these games throw out little ships, and you kind of want to go for those ships, again, for a variety of reasons. For one, uh, those little kamikaze ships will just run right into you, and again, enemies slamming into you is basically where a lot of the damage will come from in this game if you're not careful. Um, two, sometimes you'll destroy the enemies and they'll leave behind uh, refill shields like these. And so your shields will get replenished, which is great. Especially at a boss fight. <laughs> so I gotta find the one that uh, actually does damage to him. Which looks like it's that one. probably use some of my bombs just like so whoa I don't think I ah uh, yeah see wing damaged and I lost my firepower you can see how one of my wings is small and it's orange now and in order to get it back you basically have to find uh, apparently, you, you'll get these sort of power-ups. They look like your ship, but they're just a wireframe form of your ship. And when you run through that, um, your shield energy... I don't think your shield energy comes back, but your wings come back. And, um... But as you can see, I lost my firepower, which kind of sucks. So... <laughs> the silver rings that you go through that spin around, they give you your full shield power back. So I did get my full shield power back, which is good, but I'm losing it because I'm smashing into the walls. And it looks like if you get a weapon power up when your shield is, uh, not your shield, but your, your wing is gone, you won't actually upgrade your weapon. It'll actually give you the, uh, the replenish power up that gives you your wings back. So that's what happened there. I should still shouldn't have too much of a problem with this boss, even with this stock firepower. But... You know, he will definitely take more hits now, because I don't have my max firepower, so... Some of these blocks he tosses out can be destroyed, but some of them don't seem to get destroyed. It's just kind of weird how it works. You have to hit his eyeballs. And then when you defeat both eyeballs, essentially, he goes to his final form. And you want to try not to get sucked in. It seems to work out by sort of veering off to the side of the screen. Ow, that hurt. Eyeballs going away. There we go. Final form. Let me toss some bombs out. I'm going to have to do it again. You might have to do it again normally. I don't know if there's a way to just destroy him entirely without fighting this form twice. But I'm not 100% sure. It might be possible to, to uh, destroy him in, in one go uh, if you have max firepower and you're using bombs. But that is something I've actually never tried before. Using both together. I normally don't use my bombs that much in this game, to be honest with you. Actually, really, the only reason I've been using them in this Let's Play is just to use them. <laughs> but it's definitely good to use them. It's, you don't get penalized for using them. They're there as a normal sort of weapon or power-up, so take advantage of it. Ah, Star Fox. Still a fun game today. I'm glad I picked this up again. Um... As many of you guys know, normally I just play through flashcards these days because, yeah, I've got so many other hobbies and uh, things to spend money on. 
Um, spending my money on video games has to be limited. <laughs> so I use flashcards a lot nowadays just to play. And um, But uh, the Super FX games, you cannot use flash cartridges with uh, unless there eventually becomes a flash cart that has a Super FX in it. Which could very well happen down the road, but um, it would probably require gutting existing Super FX ship games, which I don't, I don't like that people actually do that, to be honest with you. There's people out there that have gutted, say, Doom cartridges and whatnot, and I get it that people want to play, say, Star Fox 2 on original hardware, which the follow-up to this game ran on the Super FX 2, which Doom uses, as well as Dirt Tracks FX. Um, and by making a reproduction cartridge, you can actually uh, play Star Fox 2, which was a fully finished game as far as I'm aware, on original hardware. But the problem is, you're gutting already somewhat uncommon games in order to do that. And I don't... I'm fine with, like, gutting, uh, you know, a Madden 93 or something like that, where there's, like, a million copies out there, and... They're a dime a dozen. Nobody wants them. They're 50 cents a pop. But don't gut Doom because Doom's like a 15 or 20 dollar game now, cartridge only. Probably partially because of people gutting the carts. You know, you gut a cart, well, it's useless. It's, it's another cart out of the pool that people can pull from when they want to buy Doom or Dirt Tracks FX or something like that. So, um, yeah, I don't entirely agree with gutting Super FX chip games, but. Uh, I don't even know how I got on that tangent, to be honest with you guys. Uh, I have been enjoying playing this game again, though. Um, again, I sort of grew up with Star Fox, and... You know, I obviously played Star Fox 64 when it came out, and that was a, a great, great follow-up. A little on the easy side of things, but it's still a phenomenal game as well. And if you haven't played Star Fox 64, I highly recommend it. Uh, it really takes everything that made this game great and just enhances on it. You know, everything's fully textured and much more detailed. Um, it, the only thing about Star Fox 64 I did not like was that the soundtrack... Um, just I didn't think the soundtrack was as good in Star Fox 64. It, uh, like, when you first start the first Star Fox, and it's got that, you know, guitar riff and the fast beat. It's awesome. And uh, there's a reason people cover the first level... Uh, Star Fox because it's an awesome tune and uh, you'll hear video game cover bands covering the first level of Star Fox again because it is awesome and I you know Star Fox 64 didn't really have that going for it and that's not to really downplay the greatness of Star Fox 64 because it is an amazing game but that is the one thing I did not really like about Star Fox 64 but still an amazing game so there you have it guys Star Fox on the Super Nintendo and it sort of goes through, shows you all the, the bosses and, you know, things like that. Which is kind of cool. You know, the Super FX definitely has its charm. Again, you know, flat, shaded, or for the most part not shaded in this case, polygons. And, um... <laughs> I just like the abstract nature that you get with these early polygonal games that don't really have textures or anything. And once you start bringing textures into play... It was like everyone was trying to begin to mimic reality. But if you notice, a lot of the buildings in this game are just like rectangles with like little blinking edges. And it, it you know, it really huh, makes for a game that feels out of this world and abstract and unique and not something that's trying to mimic, you know, everyday real life, you know, modern day cities and stuff like that. So. In that regard, I think the game still holds up really well. And the flat polygons, uh, single color polygons, actually kind of lend it to hold up better than, say, if maybe it tried to be texture mapped to, like, say, a lot of Jaguar games did or something like that. So, but, uh... And what was really interesting about this game is I believe that, uh, you know, Nintendo basically collaborated with Argonaut I don't know how much work Argonaut did on the game as far as the actual game development, aside from like the engine development and whatnot. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I just, I, I've always found it interesting when Nintendo, you know, actually makes games with, you know, Western developers. It's not just 
you know, Nintendo's usually, they make games and it's their Japanese studios do everything. But in this case, back in the day, you know, Nintendo went hand in hand with a lot of different Western developers. You know, Argonaut uh, for Star Fox, see, so assisted by Argonaut Software. And most of Argonaut's games, to be honest with you, weren't very good. <laughs> like, Argonaut released Vortex uh, not too long after this, and I just, uh, I did not think Vortex was a very good game at all. I think, actually, it could have been a great game, but it was almost, uh, it uh, tried to do too much, and uh, it, you know, the, the hardware and, and the engine just could not keep up with it and deliver a good product. Uh, Star Fox is a little more simplistic, and for that, I think it's actually a better game as a result. It's not trying to bite off more than it can chew, which Vortex did. Um, and you guys will actually, you might see that. I might do a Let's Play in Vortex. I'm still kind of up in the air because I can never make it very far in the game, and I don't want to do a Let's Play where <laughs> I beat the first level, or don't even beat the first level because the game is that tough. And just, that's the whole Let's Play. That's just not very fun. But, uh... But yeah, Argonauts games were never really that great. Like, they made uh, FX Fighter on the PC, which was supposed to come to Super Nintendo. And that just it really wasn't a very good fighting game. Um, they made Creature Shock on the 3DO and Saturn. And that was, eh, eh, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I found it really interesting that Nintendo, you know, you know, worked with developers like that back in the day. And Rare was another one they worked with, obviously, in like Donkey Kong Country and Killer Instinct. And Nintendo helped helped with those as well. But uh, well, anyway, rant mode off. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Let's Play. I will be back with a follow-up with the, uh, the level 2 portion of this game. Probably not the level three because I am not very confident in that. I, I've never beaten it before. It's tough. It's really tough. And that's something I'm going to have to practice. And I will be practicing it because it's a, it's I've, one of those personal goals of mine. Like I'd like to try to beat the level three portion of this game. But if I can't, uh, I'm not going to do a let's play on it. I'm probably going to practice it for a week or two. And uh, if I feel confident, I'll come back with a third part. If not, you guys... We'll just have these uh, parts one and two. But uh, if you enjoyed this, stay tuned in a few days. I will have part two up. And, uh, and uh, yeah, until then, take care, guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.